Hello, so in this video, we're gonna talk you through how to create some macros within LaTeX. So before we do anything, let's create a new project. So you can see I'm in Overleaf up here. I'm gonna to come to new project and blank project, and I'm just gonna call this macros, and then we should be good to go. Now I'm gonna get rid of some of the defaults which LaTeX um, or Overleaf brings in for me when I'm um, first creating a document. So I'm gonna get rid of all the titles and stuff like that, and then I should be ready to go. So let me illustrate what I'm trying to do today. Here, I'm gonna have some text, I'm gonna go before, and then I want some text that I'm gonna highlight, so I'm gonna call this here is my highlighted text, and then I'm gonna have some text which comes after that. Okay, now obviously if I recompile this at the moment, it's gonna look very, very boring, it's not gonna look anything like I want, it's, but you can see the, uh, the principle. Basically, I'm gonna have some text before, then I'm gonna have some text which I'm gonna highlight, and then I'm gonna have some text which is afterwards. So only the text which I'm highlighting, um, I wanna change. Now, one way that I can do this is actually attack my source code. So you can see this is where I wanna highlight my text. I could put a curly brace on this side, and a curly brace on this side. And then I might wanna change the font size so I could go backslash and then large. I might wanna make it bold so I could go backslash and BF series. And I may also wanna change the text color. So to do that, I'm gonna come up to the preamble um, after where it's got use package input encoding. I'm gonna go use package and I'm gonna type X color and that will enable me to change the text color. So where I've got here, here is my highlighted text. Um, I'm gonna go backslash and text color. Notice that it's spelled Americanized. And then it basically accepts two inputs. The first input is gonna be the text color which I actually wanna use. So in this case, I'm just gonna go red, okay? The second bracket is where my text which I wanna highlight is actually gonna go. So I'm just gonna copy I'll cut and paste it so that the second brace now is what the text color is gonna be changed to. Now if I set recompile, you can see that on the right hand side, this is what I want it to look like, okay? So you've got the text before, text after, and then this thing here, here is my highlighted text, has been changed because I've changed the commands over here. Now, this is all very well and good, however, if I've got other text that I want to highlight, so perhaps I wanna do this multiple times during the document, obviously changing the text that I'm highlighting each time, this is gonna take a lot of time or at least a lot of copying and pasting and adjusting to make it work. What I would really like is just one command where every time I type it, it will do this automatically for me. And that's where a macro is gonna work for you. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come up to the preamble, so where it says before the document and, and before, after where it says use the packages and stuff. I'm gonna go backslash and new command. And this is how you create a macro. So it's basically gonna accept, first of all, two sets of brackets. The first set of brackets is the name of the macro that I want to use. Now, you can call it pretty much anything you like, but just be aware that there are some macros that have already been defined. For example, large is a macro that's already been defined, and so therefore I can't call my macro large because it's a predefined mac um, predefined command in LaTeX. So I'm just gonna go backslash and attention. That's the name of my macro that I'm gonna be using. And then the second set of brackets is where I actually put what my macro is gonna be. So I'm just gonna put some um, percentages just to sort of show that that's where the start of the bracket is and that's where the end of the bracket is. And then all I'm literally gonna do is copy and paste this up here. And then what happens is, is if I come down here to where I want my text to appear, I'm gonna go backslash and attention. And now if I press recompile, you can see nothing changes on the right hand side. Now this is all very well and good. However, I want to change this because I don't want this always to say, here is my highlighted text. In other words, I want to give some inputs to my macro in order to change the text that I'm highlighting each time. So one way that I can do that is to come between the curly braces. So after the name of my macro and before where I've actually defined what my macro is, I'm gonna put a set of square brackets and I'm gonna tell Overleaf or LaTeX how many inputs it's expecting. In this case, it's just one. It's just what the text it wants to highlight is gonna be. And then where I've got here is my highlighted text, I'm gonna delete that and I'm gonna press hashtag and one. Now what this hashtag one basically means is that the first input into my macro should be what goes there, okay? So it's literally numbering what the input um, or where the input should appear. So in this case, my first input should appear here and there's only one input that needs to worry about. But what that now means, if I come down here to where it says backslash attention, 
if I put some curly braces around it, so curly braces, and now if I type, here is my highlighted text, and recompile it, you can see that that's what gets highlighted. And of course I can change this, okay? So instead of saying here is my highlighted text, just to illustrate here is my text, again, I can change it here. But what that means is that I can have in other places in the document, attention, and maybe I want to go um, final text down here, then you can see it can bring up again and I don't have to worry about defining these commands. So really, really useful from a macro perspective.